Kawhi Leonard. We will make the case for any of the three places that appear to be in the running for the superstar. Up after that, David Jacoby will tell you who he thinks is the best team in the NBA right now. And finally, are there any concerns about the chemistry between KD and Kyrie? Could that go all the way wrong? All those answers and more as we continue. But first, a little trivia for you. Kawhi Leonard made second team All-NBA this year. Who were the only two players since the merger to make an All-NBA team during their only season with one team? Only two players since the merger, All-NBA, and there two players since the merger to make an All-NBA team during their only season with a team. Who's got a guess? Tim. I would say Moses Malone is one of them. Okay. Ooh. I was thinking maybe Bernard King, but I don't think he. I don't think he had one team with one year with the with the Bullets. Right. I'm gonna. Those are my guesses. Bernard okay. King and Moses Bullets. And they are both wrong. Uh, <laughs> All right. This morning's answers are Dominique Wilkins oh. and Dwight Howard. Oh. I didn't think we'd get Nick. I thought we might get Dwight Howard. These are super tough this morning. That's Hembo work in the afternoon. Where's Hembo? We got some issues. All right, let us welcome in our front office insider, Bobby Marks, who joins us up in Bristol, who's been putting together all the contracts and salaries and all of that. And so with all eyes at this moment, Bobby, on Kawhi's decision, let us assume for this moment that he chooses the Lakers. Give us a look at what that roster would look like. Well, you're right, Greeny. $32 million, that's the number we've been talking about. And when we put Kawhi Leonard in here for Troy Daniels, who they agreed to a contract yesterday with, now we are looking at bargain shopping. And, and I think we can probably put a player like Rajon Rondo in there for the minimum. They also have the $4.8 million room exception. What they could be looking at also, players like Andre Iguodala, potential buyout in Memphis, uh, players like Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Jamal Crawford, all minimum players here. Another name to keep an eye on, Avery Bradley, Kyle Korver, two players that have uh, non-guarantee dates coming up here. Um, so you're looking at the buyout market, the minimum market, the room exception here, um, you know, for, for Kawhi Leonard. And I think, Greeny, if it isn't Lakers, the team that we're not talking about is the world champions, right? The, the Toronto Raptors. We haven't yeah. talked about them at all here. And I think with, with this team right here, we'll put Kawhi back in the starting lineup. And remember... Fred Van Vliet, Serge Ibaka, still under contract here. We can put Van Vliet in for Norm Powell. I mean, Kawhi back to Toronto, this is the team to beat in the NBA right now. I, I think that's exactly right. That's a, a really well done, Bobby. Thank you very much. And as I take this out here to the table, I, I think the point I would make here is that what we are waiting for is not just a decision from one player who is outstanding. We literally are waiting for the balance of power in the NBA to tilt. If he winds up in Los Angeles, then I stop calling you crazy. At this moment, I don't <laughs> consider the Lakers that's the fair. favorite. If you put Kawhi on that team, that's, that's, that's not even an opinion. It's a statement of fact. And if he stays in Toronto, I think they're the best team in the NBA. They just won the championship. So we're going to do something here. We're going to make the case. we got these three guys. Laura and I are going to be the judges. And you're each going to make your case for where you think he should go. David, we'll start with you. Make the case for the Lakers. Kawhi, I saw you win a championship with Toronto. It was great. Great. Congratulations. But you did it all yourself. I watched you on one leg. You hobbled the entire time. I watched your teammates terrified to shoot at the end of games against the Sixers. Just wait till you got the ball. Every basket that you made, you made yourself. Guess what? It won't be like that in the Lakers. You want to play 60 games? That's fine. All right, let's go to the Clippers. <laughs> Sean, make your case. All right, that's fine and dandy. You want to talk about going to be ready-made championship team with all those guys? We'd look at you like Kevin Durant was looked at with the Golden State Warriors, which Mr. Jacoby had just talked about and being taken for granted in the previous segment. <laughs> now, with that being said, home is home. L.A. is your home. Do the unthinkable. Win a championship with the Clippers. Did I just say that? <laughs> Tim, make a case for Toronto. Hey, look, Bobby Marks and Mike Greenberg made my case for me. You go back to Toronto, Kawhi, you have the best team in the league. You have a chance to win a second title in Canada, become the first guy to win two titles in another country. How about that? I like that case. You can make the most money there. You have a team that you trust that's built for the long haul, that has Pascal Siakam as a perfect running mate for a long time. There you go. What would you would you be trying to make the case that he should take the supermax, take the five years and tie himself there long term, or take a shorter deal that puts him back in the market more quickly? I, I would say to Kawhi, hey, do whatever you want to do. Because like I said before, he could take a one-year deal and go back in a year when they have no contracts on their books, basically, and they could reset their team however they want. 
or he could sign for the long term and get the most money. You know, we should do this again in the afternoon because this felt very much like around the horn. Like I was feeling, <laughs> I was feeling <laughs> kind of like that score. Like, who who won? won? I felt like reality, and I was like, I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute somebody in here. And, <laughs> but if I'm going to assign points, you know how he's always assigning yeah. points. And I can never quite figure out exactly ding, why ding, he's ding, assigning ding, the yeah. way he does. Complex system. But if I'm going to assign points, I, I think I'm taking the Lakers out. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm muting. Get out of here, Jacoby. And I think, I think candidly, Just set Farnham, aside. Farnham dealt your case the death blow. If Kawhi goes to the Lakers, we just spent 20 minutes talking about how Kevin Durant was taken for granted with uh, the Golden State Warriors. I think that's what happens here. He becomes, at best, the second guy on his team, and at times, even the third. Now, he doesn't strike me as a person who necessarily cares about how much he gets the ball and all of that, but I, ha I do have to believe that having to defer as much as he will have to defer to those two guys, if I'm him, I don't do it. I don't understand for the life of me why he does. Wouldn't it just be strange, too, for the guy who won finals MVP on a team where he was the guy and hailed as the guy who went and beat the Warriors to then go play with LeBron and Anthony Davis? It just would be very strange. Jacoby, is it a weak move? Jay Williams said in this I would I said that I've been muted. Go ahead. Okay, I've unmuted you. I did. It's okay. Right. Thank you. Um, I will say this. In. The difference between Katie and Kawhi is Katie didn't, he lost to the Warriors. He never he got to the finals and lost, and he needed to join the Warriors in order to win a championship. Kawhi scratched that itch years ago, and then this year he did it by himself. That's our, those boxes are already checked. It's time for load management and still winning a championship. So I would like to point out that the way we did that, the Raptors did get the last meeting here yeah. at the table. Well done. And that stuck out to me because I actually like the Raptors case the best when yes. you hear them all back to back. Now, Tim, it actually has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, Come on, you're going to think about it. I thought you did a great job. Either, I, I think you think you. about it and you say, why would he give the Raptors the last meeting if he's not seriously considering it? I've heard your case about that, that maybe if he already knew he was going there, why would he wait this long? But I just think that there's something about his relationship with Masai Ujiri and winning a championship there. You just saw Bobby Marks throw up what that team would look like. Loaded. With him. I mean, they're loaded. They're Correct. the team to beat. And, and, and it's just a question of how important the draw is of home. You're yes. an L.A. guy. And I know, look, all of us are from somewhere, and that can be important to you. And so if that is very important to him, to the point that was made here, he has scratched the championship itch, he has scrapped the finals MVP itch, all of those things. If, if, if going home is that important to him, if it's me, I go to the Clippers right. and try and win there. That's, that's what I'm saying. If, if, if you come back to L.A. and you think about just winning a championship, you won a championship in Toronto, what that did for you. If you were somehow to win a championship with the Clippers – I mean, then you're then you're at that whole next level. He's already established himself as a, as a Finals MVP twice. He's already won multiple NBA championships. He doesn't necessarily need to have that other ring to cement his legacy and who he is and how we view him. I think this year was a prime example of how he can lead, as you mentioned, on one leg. Uh, just how dynamic of a player he is, not just at the offensive end, but in particular both at both ends of the floor. So what we, we were planning to do right off the beginning of the show, and I didn't get to it, which was me, so let's do this quickly here before we move on to other things. Forget about the case you made. What do you think he's going to do? We'll go around in this circle. Tim, what do you think Kawhi will do? I've been saying for two months I think he's going to stay in Toronto uh, just because they did win. They do have the, the pitch on every level, the front office, the medical, the coaching staff. He has trust there. He has comfortability there. So I'm going to stick with that. Short term or long? I would say a short-term deal for now. I see that the risk of that is what would make me nervous. This is a guy with a history of injuries. My counter to that is Kevin Durant just blew out his Achilles, which is the single worst injury you could have, and he just got a four-year max deal. Yeah. So it, Kawhi it, is probably going to get a max deal in a year. That's no fair. What. what do you think he's going to do? I think he will join the Lakers. I don't know why he would take a meeting with Magic Johnson. I don't know how he could look at LeBron across the table from him and say, no, I don't want to play basketball with you and Anthony Davis. I and I know that he he's in Los Angeles taking these meetings for a reason. I don't think he can sit across the table from Magic Johnson and say no. I don't think he can sit across the table from LeBron James and say no. I just don't think he will. What do you think? Uh, I, I think that he's going to end up in Toronto. I, I really do. I think at the end of the day, I think he goes back to Toronto because it's the best situation. It's the best fit. He can make the most money. Uh, it gives him. Best, I think he also learned that being in the Eastern Conference is a good thing. Uh, coming from the Western Conference, getting a year taste in the Eastern Conference, where all of a sudden in the Western Conference, we hardly talked about Kawhi, even though he was this good and he's been this good for a while. He goes to the Eastern Conference, all of a sudden we're like, wow, no, he could be one of the, he's a clear top five player in the NBA. There's something to be said for that as well. Laura, I'll say this. I, 
I think he's going to go to the Lakers. Yeah! I, I think, oh, my goodness. I don't know why. Well, I, I agree with Jacoby's yeah. point. I don't like the idea of it happening. But I don't know why this thing gets dragged out to the degree it has if he's not seriously considering that. And as you said, they've got Ooh. closers in that room. LeBron James, Magic Johnson, a lot of allure of history. I Jerry think West and Doc Rivers is in a bad closer, too. We'll yeah, see. and Anthony Davis isn't a bad closer, either. Which we'll probably Shea Gilgis Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> nice, right. Meanwhile on planet Earth, lost in all the NBA signings Monday.